Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what was the best distillery in 2023. You think you know who it is? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to the Berber Retriever. Today we're going to talk about who is my number one distillery for 2023. Uh, I took a couple different uh, factors into consideration when I was creating the list of who won Best Distillery. Uh, a couple of them were pricing, uh, you know, how is their pricing on their baseline and their LE products? Uh, what was the quality of the juice that came out? Um, quantity was another factor, you know, did they release one, two, three, four, five different LEs? And then lastly, I also looked at to see if they released any baseline products. Today in the bourbon community, a lot of the distilleries are focusing on the limited availability products where they can get the most profit margin. But at the end of the day, to be a well-rounded distillery, it's are you also releasing a great baseline product for your everyday drinker in the community? So my list is in no particular order, uh, but for each one I'll explain what I loved about them and maybe a reason or two why they didn't make number one. So first on this list is Wild Turkey. They came out with a ton of LEs this year. They had their Russell's Reserve 13, Generations, uh, the Single Rick uh, house. Um, they also had their Master Key Voyage. Uh, that is just an absolute plethora of LEs. And some of those LEs are absolutely phenomenal. The Russell's Reserve 13 always knocks it out of the park. And the Wild Turkey Generations, I think, is the best turkey juice I have just ever ever had. It is absolutely phenomenal. But the reason Wild Turkey was not number one is because of their pricing. They have really jacked up the pricing in their LEs. The Russell Reserves, they went from maybe $80, $70 the first year they released to now they're $150. The Wild Turkey Generations is a $450 bottle, $500 after tax. That is just tough to swallow. And then some of the LEs I just didn't particularly enjoy. Uh, the Master Creep Voyage, I'm not a big fan of finished products, and this was in a rum finished barrel. And then also the Single Rick House, I know a lot of people loved it. For me, I am not a big rye fan, and when I was drinking the Single Rick House, I just got a ton of rye on the finish, and it just didn't really sit with me well. And next on this list is Buffalo Trace. Now, they put out a ton of great products. Their baselines are amazing. They have several LEs. They have five Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Uh, they also released their Daniel Weller uh, this year new product. Um, and then also the Prohibition uh, five bottles they released. So they've released a ton of products, but the issue for them is availability. They have not been able to produce their product at enough of a quantity to meet demand. So given that even for their shelf stable stuff, if they can't get that to a point where the average consumer can get it at MSRP on the shelf, it's just really hard for me to put them at number one. However, Buffalo Trace did do a massive expansion. So if they next year or the year after that, if they're able to get much more product on the shelf, uh, they could really rise in the rankings. The other issue for them is the LEs they did release this year, the new ones, the pricing on them is just almost dumb money. Uh, the Weller, Daniel Weller was absolutely ridiculous. Same with the Prohibition, that was about a thousand for the set. Uh, it's just at a price point that the average person just can't afford. But that said, their historic products, their baseline products, in addition to the BTAC collection, they haven't really raised the prices on them as much as they could. So I give them credit for that. And if they can increase production of those bottles to where more of them get into people's hands, I really do believe they could rise up the rankings. And next on this list is Four Roses. They came out this year with their Four Roses 2023 limited edition. It has the oldest juice that they have ever put into their LEs. And I'm telling you right now, it is absolutely phenomenal. I think it will make it in the top five at the end of the year best of list. I should be releasing my best of video in a couple weeks. You're not gonna wanna miss it. There are a ton of LE bottles in it, and I'm just super excited to see how they fare in addition to which LEs lose to the rare breed. So while the 2023 limited edition from Four Roses is absolutely phenomenal, pricing on it is fair for LEs right around $200. The issue for Four Roses is quantity. They do not release a ton of different LEs. It basically is their one limited edition. Um, they do do single barrel barrel proofs as store pick, but comparable to other distilleries who are releasing four or five LEs, it's really hard for Four Roses to be higher on the list. 
All right, next distillery to consider is Heaven Hill. They released a ton of products this year. They released the William Heaven Hill 17 at the distillery. Uh, they put out their Parker's Heritage Rye. Um, they also had their Old Fitzes this year, the 8 and the 10. And then uh, this year, the one that everyone is talking about is the Elijah Craig C Batch C923. So pound per pound, I don't think there is a distiller that puts out as many LEs as Heaven Hill. The issue for Heaven Hill, though, is quality for me this year. I think the Parkers took a step back. The Double Oak to last year was phenomenal. It's almost unfair to compare any Parkers to the last year's Double Oak just with how great it was. And then the Old Fitzes, it was also a step back. Last year they had the 17 and the 19. This year was the 8 and the 10, almost cut in half the age statements on them. And I think those 17 and 19s were much better than the 10 and 8 came out this year. I have to give credit to them on the William Hill 17. Uh, it beat last year's, the 15, and it came in at the same price as the 15, and this one has more proof. However, it is still rather expensive. It is the second most expensive bottle I've ever bought. And then lastly, the Elijah Craig Sea Batch. I give them props on this for the pricing. It should be around $80 for a 13 year, seven month age dated product, which is just unheard of in the whiskey community today. Today, you're lucky if you can get a product that charges $10 per year. And with this being at $80, it is an absolute steal. Not only the pricing, but the quantity. They put out a ton of these barrels, much more than many other LEs out there. That said, I know it can still be difficult to find in some parts of the country. Uh, I know Maryland did not get that many cases of it. And next on this list is Old Forester. This one could have been higher on this list if I was able to try more of their products. They came out with the birthday bourbon this year, which I haven't had yet. Uh, they had a couple 117s. I did try the Bottle and Bond and Warehouse H. The Bottle and Bond is absolutely fantastic. Great chance to be top 10. The nose on it is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, now the pricing of all of them, I think it's fair considering the market. Uh, the Birthday Bourbon is their LE. That's priced with similar LEs. Uh, one bonus for Old Forester this year was that their 117s are in 375s. I really wish more distilleries would do their LEs in 375s. It, that way it would get out to more people's hands, they experience it, try it. In addition, if you put in 375s, in theory, the pricing should come down on it so it becomes more affordable for more people in the community. And also from my perspective, I would much rather have two LEs at 375s than having to spend my monthly budget on one LE. So while Old Forester didn't release any shelf-stable products this year, uh, they are releasing one next year, so they are the front runner so far. I haven't been able to try it yet. It is the 1924 coming in at 10 year age dated. Oh, I think Old Forester, the only age dated products are the Birthday Bourbon, um, the King Kentucky, and maybe a couple others, but they do not age date many of their products. This hasn't hit the shelf in my area yet, so it's hard to know if this is gonna be an annual release or a shelf stable product. Since it's part of the Whiskey Road lineup, I envision that they're probably expecting it to be a shelf stable product, but we'll just have to see how it does. So the next on this list was a strong contender for number two, but it just barely got edged out, and it is Michter's. Michter's this year released their Michter's 10-year bourbon, their 10-year rye, and their toasted barrel strength rye. Now of those three, I've only tried their Michter's 10 bourbon, but their Michter's 10 bourbon is absolutely phenomenal. The aroma on it is amazing. It is one of the few sub hunter proof whiskeys that I say is worth the price. Uh, but the big knock for me for Mictus this year was I just hadn't been able to try them. I didn't get my hands on the Mictus 10 rye or the Mictus toasted barrel proof rye, but I have heard great things about the toasted rye. Um, I was able to get a sample though, and it will be going at the end of the year blind. So it'll be exciting to see exactly how it stacks up. Now, before we get to winner of the distillery of the year, if you're enjoying this content, hit that subscribe button. I'm a small channel trying to get to a thousand subs because on YouTube, when you get to a thousand subs, many doors open. In addition, if you're enjoying this content, I have some great videos coming out. Um, I got my best of the year rise, uh, honorable mention bourbons because I have way more than 10 and uh, my top 10 list for bourbons. So if you're enjoying this content, you won't want to miss out. All right, so my winner of best distillery for 2023 is Jack Daniels. They have come out with some great products. Uh, first, I'll start with their new shelf stable product. It is the Jack Daniels Rye Single Barrel Barrel Proof. 
I know when this first came out, uh, it was a little hard to get with people hoarding it, um, but at least in my area, uh, it's sitting on the shelves now, and I am absolutely in love with it. I think it is probably the best shelf-stable rye that is out there in the market. It is a bourbon lover's rye, especially if you can get one of the ones that are higher proof. Um, I had one that was 138 proof, another that was hazmat, and both of those were absolutely phenomenal. I think they could beat many Ellie bottles that are charging $200 plus. And Jack Daniels gets bonus points for this bottle because I don't think many distilleries are releasing many shelf-stable products anymore. Uh, I know Bardstown released their three origin series, which were great, um, but many distilleries doing a lot more limited productions, calling them LEs, and getting the max profit they can get out of those bottles. And I really hope for 2024 that more distilleries start focusing on their core consumer and start releasing more shelf-stable products that are a very reasonable price and are just absolutely great quality juice. Uh, but outside the new uh, shelf-stable rye, They've released three other LEs. Uh, they released the Twice Barreled Rye. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of this, but I have to give them points on price. The pricing on this was very fair compared to other LEs, especially for a rye. But the ones that won it for them for me was the JD10 and the JD12. Both these come at great price points for LEs, uh, $80 and under, I believe. The JD10, I wish it was a little more shelf stable. To me, it doesn't taste like an LE product but just a good, well-rounded bourbon. However, the GD12, that is an absolute LE killer. Uh, coming in at $80, it just smacks the pants off with these $200 plus LEs. The aroma on it is amazing. Uh, the proof, 107, is probably the ultimate prime proof and just all around a great bourbon. I'm excited to see for what they have in store for 2024. Uh, every year they have been releasing a new version of their aged state products. I have my fingers crossed that this year they released the JD15. Um, it would also be interesting to track their JD12 to see how that changes over time. The JD12 to me tastes much older than 12 year old product and once they release their older aged state products it will be interesting to see if the flavor profile of the JD12 changes at all. So that's my list of best distilleries in 2023. Leave in the comments uh, what was your favorite distillery. Maybe there's one I missed, or maybe there's one on the list I just didn't give it the credit it deserved. But before you head out, if you're enjoying this content, make sure you check out this video or this video. And until next time, cheers.